Hey guys, welcome back to Bioinformatics with BB. I'm Dr. Baba Jan Banangyapali and I keep getting questions like which system should I buy for bioinformatics? Or do I need a fancy workstation? Well, guess what? You might not need any expensive hardware at all. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Colab, which is totally free and runs right in your browser. No installations, no big setup. Just open a notebook and start coding. Google Colab is basically a hosted Jupyter Notebook service from Google. It's perfect for quickly getting started with Python, R, or other languages commonly used in bioinformatics. You can test out small tasks like generating simple graphs or running a quick statistical analysis, all on the free tier using Colab's GPUs or TPUs. It's surprisingly powerful for many everyday tasks. However, if you need to tackle more complex projects, like running large-scale sequence alignments or training machine learning. Models on genomic data, you might have to upgrade your resources. That can mean switching to Colab Pro or Pro Plus for increased GPU, TPU power, or ensuring you have enough storage for big data sets. But for most basic or intermediate analyses, the free version can be more than enough to get started. Google Colab provides three runtime options, CPU, GPU, and TPU, each suited for specific purposes. By default, Colab runs on a CPU, which is ideal for basic tasks like data pre-processing, handling small data sets, or running lightweight machine learning models. You can confirm your active runtime type by checking the top right corner of the interface. For more demanding tasks, such as deep learning or large matrix calculations, GPUs are a better choice. Google Colab's free tier offers GPUs like NVIDIA T4 or P100, which significantly accelerate computational speed. To enable GPU, navigate to the Runtime menu, select Change Runtime Type, and choose GPU under Hardware Accelerator. For large-scale training, tensor processing units are highly efficient. Designed by Google for tensor computations, TPUs work best with TensorFlow, but may require some code adjustments. Similar to GPUs, you can enable TPU through the Change Runtime Type menu. Switching between these runtimes is simple. Just go to the Runtime menu, click Change Runtime Type, and select the hardware accelerator you need. Once you make a selection, your session will restart with the new runtime configuration. This flexibility allows you to adapt your computational resources to suit the task at hand. The Command Palette is another standout feature in Google Colab acting as a shortcut hub for efficient workflow management. It simplifies access to various features without requiring you to navigate through multiple menus. To open the command palette, press Ctrl plus Shift plus P on Windows Linux or CMD plus Shift plus P on macOS. A search bar will appear enabling you to type commands and execute them instantly. The command palette offers a range of functionalities that streamline your work. For runtime management, you can restart the runtime, interrupt the execution of a running cell, or reset all runtimes to clear memory and start fresh. For hardware configuration, you can switch between CPU, GPU, and TPU directly from the command palette, or check your current hardware accelerator. Another great thing about Colab is collaboration. You can share a Colab notebook exactly like you'd share a Google Doc. Just send the link and your friends or colleagues can view or even run the same code in their own browser. That makes group projects or teaching sessions a breeze because everyone's always on the same page. Getting started is really simple. Just head to colab.google.com and create a new notebook. You'll see cells where you can type code in Python, R or both if you set it up right and then execute those cells by pressing Shift plus Enter. If you need a specific library, type dot pip install library name in a cell, run it, and you're good to go. You can also upload files, connect your Google Drive, and store or load data easily. So, whether you're just starting out with small scripts or looking to handle bigger tasks like genome scale analyses, Google Colab is a fantastic option. It's free, it's cloud-based, and it requires almost no setup. Let's start with an example. In one cell, define a small list 
of genes, then generate some random log fold change, log FC values for each gene. In the next cell, you can visualize these log FC values in a bar chart. With one quick press of shift pulse enter, you'll see your chart pop up immediately below the code cell. No local setup or installs required. It's a straightforward way to try out ideas, explore data, and even collaborate with others, all within your browser. Not only can you run Python or R scripts, but you can also connect to databases, mount your Google Drive, and use the tools on the left panel like data science helpers, machine learning models, or TensorFlow workflows. In future videos, we'll be performing most of our bioinformatics analyses using Google Colab or Jupyter Notebooks. Another awesome feature is that Colab has built-in AI code generation tools. For instance, if you enable the AI option, you can describe what you want to do, like saying, I need a function to calculate GC content for a DNA sequence, and Colab will automatically generate a code snippet to help you get started. Today's session, we are going to work on our own data and I will show you a few things. First thing, from Colab, connect to Google Drive, set the current working directory and access the folder where your data is stored. Second thing, we will install the necessary libraries and perform analysis. For example, I am going to perform an NGS quality analysis using FastQC. For this, I will use the FastQC library in Python. We will also do some basic statistical analysis using Google Colab and generate various graphs using AI generated code. For FastQC analysis, we need an input file in faster format. Here, I have forward and reverse faster format files in my drive. As I mentioned earlier, to access your Google Drive from Colab, first, you need to connect Colab to your Google Drive and locate your FASTA file directory. From there, you can run the necessary commands. First command, I will install the FastQC libraries in Python, and then we will execute the FastQC command install fastqc run fastqc on forward and reverse faster files after execution of the command you can see the output was generated in the folder Access the results by opening the HTML page of the FastQC result to view the quality of the NGS data. At this point, I am not focusing on discussing the results. You can check my previous videos on NGS to see the analysis on QC.
The second thing we can do is simple statistical analysis. For example, I am going to perform a simple t-test. We will generate results in a data format file and also visualize the results in various graphs. Install and import necessary libraries for statistical analysis. Once installed, we will perform a simple t-test and generate the resortals and plots. You can see here the box plot showing the distribution of values for each group, making it easy to compare the two groups visually. Now, with the AI code generation feature in Google Collab, the process and coding become much easier. You just need to give the correct prompt and it will generate the code for you. For example, for the same t-test analysis, I can write a prompt like, I want to perform a simple statistical t-test analysis. Please provide the code snippet, generate outputs in graphs and a CSV file, and use the input file located at this location. Colab's AI will then create the necessary code to carry out the analysis, visualize the results, and save the outputs as specified. In the next video, we'll dive a bit deeper into advanced bioinformatics analysis in a simplified way using Google Collab. I'll show you how to connect to GitHub and use existing tools from GitHub to perform the analysis. Additionally, I'll demonstrate how to perform molecular dynamic simulations, docking, and modeling in Collab. These topics will be covered in this series, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and share our content. Your support helps us bring more valuable content to you.